Hey folks, it's Tim aka Turbo PB. I recently got in two lights from a relatively um, unknown manufacturer called Taltronics and this one they've dubbed the Thorlite TT-TF01 but for brevity's sake we'll just call it the TF01 from here on. It is a double um, A light, two cell double A light and the reason why I haven't actually particularly reviewed this format quite often is because I figured for this length it's a little I guess for me it's a little bit slightly unwieldy. I figure if I'm going to um, carry uh, this much length, I may as well just go with a single cell 18650 size light uh, that potentially has better runtime as well. So, but the great thing about this um, light in particular is that it can achieve single cell format by removing um, that extension tube. So I'll get to that in a second. So let me just hop over to the packaging. Now the reason why all this is out uh, beyond time saving is the fact that Taltronics like IKEA has mastered the art of just cramming everything into the most compact efficient um, way possible. I, I've actually struggled to get all of that back in here but anyway it is a nice little plastic case um, that is reusable and within it it's a nicely embossed instruction set that has um, a few different languages actually and let me just cover the the features here really quick so you've got the output on a single AA cell at 168 lumens on high uh, two AA batteries at 180 lumens uh, which I actually feel that these two are probably slightly overestimated however though on a single um, lithium ion cell 14500 they've estimated 325 but I've actually achieved an excess of 400 so um, again I'll get into that a little bit more later now, sorry for the banding, but unfortunately, it's just the nature of um, high contrast scenes and digital camera. This is a new Sony RX100 that I just recently got, um, so you'll have to excuse that. It did also come with a nice holster that probably functions, I guess, a little bit better in, uh, in two-cell format than it does in AA. Now, since I have it in two-cell format, I'll just show you. The reason for that is because the light does stick out a little bit more so it makes it very easy to grab and release whereas in single cell format it's actually down here uh, which again I'll cover it in, uh, later on now the holster actually does not have a velcro wrap so it does require the removal of your belt um, to slot through it in order to attach it however though you pretty much figure once it's on it's not coming off okay it is of decent quality it does also have a D loop here and spandex here. All right, and also there is this nice little lanyard here, uh, but it's only attachable via this mini split ring here, and that goes on to the attachment point here on the tail cap, a single point here. And last but not least, a little accessories package that features uh, two spare O-rings a spare rubber tail cap cover switch and a flat aluminum bezel that can actually replace the uh, stainless steel crenellated bezel but again more on that later. Now it is currently raining and thundering so we got a Gallad soundtrack playing in the background but um, hopefully that won't be too much of a distraction here. Now currently as previously mentioned this does have a stainless steel light but unlike most lights this actually does not hold down that lens or the reflector is actually held in um, from within which I'll get into in a second but over here there is a texture but it's rather smooth so it doesn't really contribute too much in the way of um, grip but this section is removable there is no AR coating that I can ascertain on here nor is it uh, touted as a feature so I'm just going on assumption that there isn't any now this piece here is um, beyond decorative it actually is also functional because it, it serves as a heat sink. Now the reason for that is this is actually the the pill. Case in point I now have the top bezel removed and here you can see that it should allow relatively easy um, access for modding. That is a XML T6 spin. And as I had previously mentioned earlier this stainless steel bezel once you remove it um, again there is nothing more it really just is just screw on and then you could take that spare part the flat bezel and put it on in, in its place and the reflector itself is actually screwed in as you can see there's those two holes for a tweezer for you to unscrew it out and that is what's keeping the lens in place from the inside out now moving on to the rest of the disassembly of the light as mentioned the top part can be removed 
you can see that the positive is actually recessed and that serves as a physical uh, reverse battery protection because when using AA cells um, it just simply will not make contact even if you input the batteries reverse. Now as you can see there are also again two holes for a tweezer so you could pretty much disassemble this whole thing. Um, this should be fairly easily moddable. Now moving on to the rest of the light here we got the first of the battery tubes. This is the main battery tube that will actually serve um, in a single cell format. Now this is the extension that actually is uh, removable and last but not least we get to the tail cap that does feature a um, forward mechanical clicky so it does allow momentary use. Now I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this light. Now to finish up coverage of the tail cap there is this groove here that can uh, that one can attach the stainless steel clip on but I personally feel it's actually better served being attached on this end to be carried uh, bezel up versus bezel down because it does create a little bit of awkwardness due to its length and girth um, so you figure if you slip it your jeans or whatnot and you clip it there it's a little bit hard to remove so again uh, I would probably be inclined to attach it at this point also in single cell format it does also create issues when you're trying to remove the tail cap so case in point here it is in single cell format and as you can see it does um, allow you to clip things in this format however it's when you try to unscrew it initially it's fine because there is still enough of the heatsink fin here I guess I'll just call it that um, for now uh, until such point you remove it enough that it starts hitting once it hits this groove that's where it will get jammed right so it does require that you pull it up a little bit to unscrew it so again that's why I'd actually prefer to attach it that way and carry a bezel up um, there's also the fact that of course this anodization does um, wear out eventually. I did manage to nick it a little bit right there um, by, I guess, not too careful uh, removal. So, again, I, I would say the preferred method is to just put it there and you would carry it bezel up. Of course, with the crenellations, it may create an issue. So, you could either use the flat bezel or, again, if you're not picky about um, this getting dinged up you could also carry a bezel down of course. Yet another reason for mounting the uh, clip um, bezel up is because when you do unscrew the tail cap to change the batteries that clip does not interfere with anything at all because it is capturing on this particular rim that is part of the tube versus uh, any movable parts so again no interference very easy removal. So getting back to the tail cap, there is but a single point for the lanyard attachment for the uh, mini split ring right there. And there are these four points um, as a tail cap guard. It does allow it to tail stand, although it's not the greatest because that rubber switch does stick out ever so slightly. So it's not the most stable, but it is uh, possible for emergency use. Now overall, size-wise, it's a reasonably compact light um, for double A size, although I don't really have too many by way of comparison. I do have the Sunway Man V11R. Um, side by side, this is now with the extension tube attached. So as you can see, um, the TF01 is slightly larger overall, but not too much so. And most of it is actually attributable to this uh, chunky stainless steel bezel at the front. If you put on the flat bezel, they actually would be a little bit closer in size. But again, very um, reasonably close to each other in size. In single cell format, it does feel great in the hands. Um, it's very too easily to switch from overhand use to a underhand grip. But of course, if you do want to cycle through the modes, you do have to stay with the uh, overhand grip so you can keep your thumb on the momentary switch. In two cell format, the only other light that I currently have size-wise that's comparable is a uh, Eagle Tech. But this is actually uh, on loan from a friend because I'm helping him repair um, the module here. And as you can see, overall, it's quite comparable in size, if um, just a smidgen smaller, or shorter, I should say, actually. Now, in two-cell format, because this isn't a large turbo headlight or large light by any means, it doesn't feel unwieldy at all. But however, though, it, my considerations against two-cell um, double-A lights is only because of, I guess, um, carry considerations as well as, I guess, storage. Of course, this is completely subjective. I'm just not too particularly fond of the two AA light format. Again, I would either go for two cell 18650 or single 18650 size if I were to um, pack. But again, that's my personal preference. Overall, fit and finish wise, it's uh, 
That's quite good. It, it's uh, again, I've had no exposure. I've never really heard of uh, this company until um, they contacted me about reviewing the lights. But um, if there was but one minute pick, it's that I felt like these edges here on the uh, crenellations are not fully deburred. It is a little bit sharp here, and likewise. This one is slightly better because it was polished and sanded down, but over here it's, um, again, probably a little bit sharper than I would care for. As for the sharp points on the tail cap, uh, because this is fully deburred and anodized, it does not feel as strong, uh, but I suppose you can't really dull it too much because otherwise it would just defeat the purpose of um, the strike capability. So, now the anodized finishing is uh, matches overall between the head, tail cap, and the body. And overall, it, it just feels like a very, very solid light. I don't really um, notice uh, any glaring defects. So the light did come very well greased and lubed up. I didn't really have to add any. And there was not much grittiness um, in, in the action. So those are always definitely welcome signs um, that the light has undergone a uh, certain minimum level of quality checks. Another thing I would have liked to seen, um, I guess, Perhaps not necessarily fit and finish wise, but perhaps um, again design wise is uh, beveled edges so that way when you do insert the batteries, you know, if you're not really uh, paying attention, it goes in nice and easy. Although, of course, it's not like say, you know, this was really such a big deal, but it's just thoughtful little touches like that um, that is actually featured on the Sunway Man's extension tube, um, those beveled edges that makes you, you know, feel like, hey, this designers really thought gave it some thought when they were um, producing this light. So, so far I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this company. Of course, it remains to be seen um, overall in the long run how they uh, hold out because obviously the product is one thing, the customer service is yet another. So uh, until I guess they prove themselves um, in both categories, it, again, I guess the jury's still out. But in terms of the actual product itself, I would rate this as outstanding. The quality is really um, quite good. Now getting into the UI, as previously mentioned, there is a forward mechanical clicky that does allow momentary use. So what that simply means is that if you have press it, the light will turn on. Now I currently do have this on a single analog double X, so output is not overwhelming, but it is definitely sufficient for um, most everyday use, uh, provided you're not shooting off very far or you're really searching a wide area. So you can initiate a full click to cycle through the modes, or a half press, to keep cycling through until you finally reach your desired state. Again, always from high, medium to low. And once you um, reach the desired mode, you just full click on to keep it in constant on. Now there are no secondary or hidden modes, so no blinkies or whatnot. So this should hopefully be perfect for those who actually don't care for those. Uh, but for those who do, unfortunately, uh, you may have to look elsewhere if it's a absolute must. Beam angle wise, the TF01 is roughly about 60 degrees um, from end to end for the flood. Um, although, of course, I do have the exposure locked right now, and you're not really seeing some re light residual um, spill over here. But, it, it, you know, because of the XML and the texture uh, orange peel reflector, it does cast a reasonably floody beam, but still with some um, decent hotspot, as can be seen here, which I estimate to be roughly. I would say about 20 degrees, but again, because of the texture reflector and the transition, it's not as distinct as say, you know, again, with a smooth reflector. Now beam profile wise, owing to its texture reflector and of course the XML LED and a relatively um, shallow head, non turbo head, um, you do get a reasonably nice floody profile and a very, very smooth transition uh, with almost no ringiness. Now there may be potentially, um, I guess a outer edge ring, but again, that's only because I'm quite close to the paper right now, less than a foot. But as I draw this out over a longer distance, you will not see that. It, as you can see right now, it does give it a very, very nice smooth beam profile with no abrupt changes from the hotspot to the spill. Likewise, that color is a fairly nice one. I would say there's a fairly moderate amount of purple slash magenta in there, mixed in with a little bit of green, but overall, this has a very um, nice, pleasant color. 
out of uh, more of the recent beams that I've seen, which tend to be a little bit greenish in nature. But of course, that could also be because of the T6 bin, uh, but although I'm not sure what the color bin is for this particular LED. Now, the output levels, this is running on two AA cells right now. This is on high, medium. Unfortunately, it, it does, um, the camera, there is a flicker here. And then finally on low. Now, I'm not sure if this uses PWM or not, but on low, I do, if I, if I press it right against my hair, I do hear a very, very faint buzzing. But like I said, you literally have to have it right against your ear, number one. And number two, really be listening for it, otherwise you'll miss it. So, but again, overall, a very, very nice usable um, beam profile. In summary, I'm actually very pleasantly surprised by this light um, because again, this is a relatively unknown manufacturer yet, and I really had no expectations whatsoever. But thus far, quality-wise, it's quite outstanding with the exception, as mentioned, a little um, rough around the edges, literally, no pun intended, here, um, as well as um, here, not as bad, but potentially some, some sharp corners that could be probably uh, better polished and sanded down. But overall, fit and finish is uh, phenomenal. It, it really is um, quite good and comparable to some of the best uh, in my collection. So I really look forward to um, more products from Tautronics in the future. And that concludes this review. As part of FTC disclosures, the TF01 was provided by Tautronics for review. Thanks again for watching.